On today's Locked On Texan podcast, the Texans O-line takes another hit. Can the backup stand the test of time? And C.J. Stroud is running with the first team to open up Thursday's preseason game. You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to a Tuesday episode of the what? The Locked On Texan Podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your Texans football analyst, John, some sports guy, Hickman. And, of course, I'm joined by none other than Sports Illustrated's own and Texan Credential Media member, Cody M. Davis. And the M stands for more, 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 because we're looking at more takeaways from day 10 of training camp for the Houston Texans. M stands for Mamba. More mumble, <laughs> however you want to put it. We're also going to take a look at C.J. Stroud has been announced to be the starting quarterback against the New England Patriots this Thursday for the Houston Texans' first preseason game. But there's no way we're going to start this show without talking about Titus Howard. Head coach D'Amico Ryans announced Monday that right tackle Titus Howard will be out <clears throat> for a while, comes to find out. It'll be between four to six weeks with a hand injury that he sustained this past Saturday at training camp. Again, Howard is expected to mix to miss four to six weeks after undergoing hand surgery, which would put him on track to return for the season opener at the earliest and the latest week three. Titus Howard is now the second Texans O-lineman to mm. go down within this past week. If we look at the backup options, ladies and gentlemen, you got George Fant. Two of the last three seasons, Fant played majority of his snaps at right tackle. Now, at right tackle, George Fant allowed eight sacks. At left tackle, was featured in 840 snaps in 2021. He only allowed one sack. Fant also did have a pass block win rate of 89.3%. Through 15 games, 31st among tackles before suffering a knee injury that landed him on IR. Greg Little lined up at both left and right tackle last season, allowed five sacks. However, he has now also been placed on IR due to a back injury and undergoing more tests. So he's out, which does leave Houston with Austin Deckless, who started every game at right tackle in college for LSU and did not allow a sack in his last season. I know you guys look thinking to yourself, what the heck, Charlie mm -hmm. Heck? Well, he is also still oh, out yeah. as well. So when I look at the battle of backups, George Fant, Austin Deckless, that is what I'm going to look at starting this Thursday. I think Titus Howard being out would absolutely affect the run and pass protection. Mm -hmm. But this is the NFL. And next man up is always a possibility. The concern, listeners and viewers, is the backups haven't been the best of options. And so, Cody, I want to turn it over to you. When we look at George Fenn, who's going to get some opportunities starting Thursday, when we look at second-year offensive lineman Austin Deckless, by the way, won the award back in 2019, I believe, for the being a part of the best offensive line in college. When we look at that battle of backups, Cody, what are your thoughts on those two men and overall the situation with Titus Howard? Well, John, I hate to break the news to you, but you might be the only one that's looking at George Fent right now. And I only say that because ever since Titus Howard went out, there's only been three guys who have stepped up at right tackle taking first team reps. On Saturday, it was Killian. When the injury took place, he was the primary guy taking those first team reps with that offensive line. And on Monday, day 10 of training camp, which by the way, Titus Howard did have make a brief appearance and he did have his hand wrapped heavenly. Um, but on Monday, day 10 of training camp, Austin Deculus and Tyler Beach, both of those guys split first team reps. And I'm starting to get a sense of the Texans are going through their evaluation and thinking to themselves that a potential Titus Howard replacement is going to come down between those three guys. And as of right now, if you ask me who's been the best right tackle, it's been Austin Deculus, which leads me to the most concerning part. 
at the start of training camp, we looked at this offensive line and we said to ourselves, man, this has the potential to be top 10 in the league. However, not only do you lose Titus Howard, but last week you lost Scott Quisenberry, who tore his ACL and MCL. You're looking at a potential starting five that can go Laramie Tunsil, Kenyon Green, Juice Scrubs, Shaq Mason, and Austin Deckelis. Um, This was, in my opinion, one of the worst things that could have happened to the Houston Texans. Um, Titus Howard has been arguably the, not even arguably, Titus Howard has been the second best offensive lineman for the Houston Texans ever since his rookie season in 2019, I believe, if my math correct. He gave up an average of two and a half sacks every, per year. Um, speedy recovery to Titus Howard, man, but... I just don't like the sound of this. So right now, if with the four to six weeks starting, you have Titus Howard being able to return September 4th, which is the Monday before the start of the regular season. And I look at Titus Howard and that timetable. Well, that's the earliest. The latest, according to the timetable, would be September 4th. 18th, which would put him on track for week three. By no means would I rush Laramie Tunsil's return. That's number one. You Titus Howard. T Titus Howard, excuse me. I, by no means would I rush Titus Howard's return. I think this is a great opportunity for Houston to do a couple of things. First and foremost, with Titus Howard being out, you kind of get extra reps for other guys, right? Because at some point during this preseason game, Titus Howard was going to be out on that field, no doubt about it. So now mm -hmm. you get more of an opportunity to kind of see some of the other guys and what they're able to bring to, to this team. You pretty much know what Titus Howard is going to bring to this team. Big reason why, that's why he got that contract extension. But overall, I'm looking at this as an opportunity for Houston to make sure that they evaluate correctly because overall the backups for the Houston Texans O-line hasn't been good consistently, but I wouldn't rush it. I don't think this is a big of a deal as some people are, are making it out to be. You don't? I don't think because here's why. So if this was a situation where, and I, I wrote my notes before we found out a time frame, but if this was a situation where Houston put Titus Howard on IR, but he'd have to be out for four games. And his first game back at that point would have been Atlanta, week five. But it isn't. And now I'm looking at this by saying, okay, well, surgery already kicked off. Okay, well, at the earliest before week one, at the latest week three, I trust an in, in, in offensive scheme to be able um, – to scheme up ways to make up for the loss of Titus Howard not being on the field. But I think this is a perfect opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to really get a full grasp of what Austin Deckless can do. We talked about Charlie Head. We talked about Austin Deckless and those two guys being the swing tackle for Houston. Remember that conversation? Mm. With Austin, with Charlie Heck being out, this is an opportunity for Charlie Heck, for Austin Deckless, excuse me, to prove that he deserves to be on this roster. Also, there's no Greg Little to worry about as well. So we look at George Fent. We look at Austin Deckless. Which one of those guys are going to battle out? I think because of the experience, George Fent may take over. But George Fent hasn't necessarily looked great in terms of his last season. 2021, he did play left tackle, and he played much better. But it makes a whole world of a lot of difference when you're on one side compared to the next Overall, speedy recovery to Titus Howard. We actually saw the injury take place when he walked off the field. And at that moment, the way he was walking, I knew it was a hand injury. I'm glad he got surgery. I'm glad he, everything's diagnosed. Between four to six weeks, I don't think that is big of a deal as some people are making it out because there isn't a lot of time missed. <laughs> Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week, all season long. Whether you're prepping for a draft or scouting the waiver wire, every week we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So with draft prep underway... 
for the upcoming season. Let's see who Vinny has picked out for us on this week's eBay Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. Listen, come here, come here, come here. You're looking for a second-year fantasy football wideout receiver who can drive your team to big points while he catches on with a new starting quarterback? Garrett Wilson is a guaranteed fit with Aaron Aaron Rodgers, excuse me, ready to build on his rookie promise with the New York Jets. Watch Wilson, Garrett Wilson, not Zach Wilson, but watch Wilson make big plays all over the field with his speed, quickness, and route running ability. Vinny Iyer from Locked On Fantasy Football is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows about championships team because each player is about being a perfect fit for that championship team same with your vehicle with ebay guarantee fit and over 122 million parts and accessories for your vehicle right at your fingertips you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly all the time air filters brakes batteries tail lights alternators shock struts you name it ebay motors has it and they'll make sure it's the right fit for your car because eBay Guaranteed Fit helps you understand exactly what part you need for your vehicle the very first time. For parts and accessories that fit your vehicle, just look for the green check. Get the right parts, the right fit, and with the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Motors Guaranteed only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Locked On Texans. C.J. Stroud, according to Coach D'Amico Ryans, has been named quarterback one for the Houston Texans preseason opener against the New England Patriots. That does not come as a surprise because ever since Thursday's training camp, C.J. Stroud has been taking first-team reps. And on Monday, I think John listeners and viewers might have been the most telling of all because the Houston Texans – during their final 11 on 11 play, they put 18 minutes on the game clock. And between the mixtures of players that they have been using on the first and the second team, CJ Stroud was the primary quarterback taking all of the reps. But here's the kicker when CJ Stroud walked on the sideline to take a breather, it wasn't Davis Mills that stepped in for him. It was Case Keenum. Mm. Now, I'm not about to get into the whole Mm. what does that mean and all this other stuff because, look, that could mean a variety of things. That could mean that, you know, maybe as of right now it hasn't been reported, but maybe Davis Mills is dealing with some kind of minor injury or whatever the case might be. Or it could be a strategy thing because as as, as news broke Monday after day 10 of training camp, C.J. Stroud is going to be the starting quarterback for this team, and this is going to be his NFL debut. So maybe they just wanted to make sure that he is comfortable taking a lot more than, you know, you get three reps and then, okay, let's switch it, and then the second team comes in. You know, don't want to speculate too much into that, but, John, that was very telling. But when you look at C.J. Stroud, what are your expectations going into his unofficial debut? Yeah. And not only that, I do want to mention. It's official now. <laughs> I do want to mention this. I wonder how much of this so-called quarterback battle are they, are they going to put in on this first preseason game? Because I'm looking at this from a standpoint, if C.J. Stroud goes out there and plays really, really well, then without a shadow of a doubt, the quarterback competition is going to be over. However. If he goes out there and struggle, doesn't command a huddle, doesn't look as efficient, I do wonder if next week we start seeing them work Davis Mills back in because, ladies and gentlemen, keep in mind, Tuesday through Saturday's practice, C.J. Stroud looked really good. And the same thing could be said for Davis Mills. Monday, I don't know what was going on. Neither one of the quarterbacks looked very efficient, very good. Yeah. So I got – I got two hats I'm aware of right now. Mm-hmm. First hat is for my Texan fans out there. Shout out to you guys. And if you are new to the channel, a couple of things. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. But also know that my favorite team of all time happens to be the team you're playing Thursday. But let's talk Texan football. You asked me what am I looking forward to. Mm-hmm. Number one, this is something that I wanted to highlight on yesterday's show. Didn't get a chance to do it. But I just want to see CJ operate 
in Bobby Slowick's offense. And for us to get a visual more than what we've gotten against another team of what this offense is actually going to look like. Oh, now, can I say something real quick? Absolutely. Case Keenum. We spoke to Case Keenum Monday, and Case Keenum said that a version of Bobby Slowis' offense is the quote. greatest hits I of love, the West Coast offense. He said the I first single is going to be dropped on Thursday. <laughs> I love that quote, by the way. When I saw it, I got to think to myself, if it's the greatest hits, are we going to see – you know, some Dre Day in there. We're going to see nothing but a G thing, or we're going to see some Kendrick but or game. But I just want to see him fully operate to a certain extent, like be comfortable in that offense. And I can tell you guys right now, I would expect, if not preseason one, but throughout the entire preseason, throughout the regular season, the utilization of running backs. Guys, mm-hmm. I want to tell you Damian Pierce has really worked on becoming a pass catcher out of the backfield. I mean it. When I tell you guys, for the times I was out on the field, and Cody can attest to this, the utilization of the tight ends for this offense. And if we go look and see what the San Francisco 49ers did last year, I wish I had those numbers. That's something I'll bring back on tomorrow's show. But in terms of utilizing their running backs and tight ends in an offense, I think it's pretty high. We look at what Christian McCaffrey was able to do in that offense, the big reason why they traded for him. Greg Kittle, uh, George Kittle, how big he is, right? Kyle Youthcheck, I, I may be saying his name incorrect, but the fullback, they really like to utilize the Swiss Army knife, right? And so I want to see C.J. Stroud just operate the greatest hits of that offense. That's number one and foremost. Like, be comfortable Manning that offense and take what the defense gives you, right? Uh, stand from 790. This was on uh Friday, I believe. Had a question and he took it right out of me. When you look at what Ohio State was able to do during CJ Stroud's time, and majority of all of their quarterbacks, they take those big shots down the field, right? Big plays are ingrained in that offense. During training camp, we didn't see big shots down the field consistently. And so for year one, of course, you take your shots when you feel like it. But what I want to see from C.J. Stroud, just take what the defense gives you, right? Make sure that your comfortability is your number one goal right now. Getting comfortable with guys that may or may not make this roster. Getting comfortable with your starters. Getting comfortable with rotational guys that's coming in, right? And so that's what I want to see the most out of C.J. Stroud. There's no doubt about it, if I can put my Patriots hat on really quick, oh that gosh. the Bill Belichick's team-led team won't try to still be intense on defense. You're going to have a lot of guys that may or may not make that roster, right? But be comfortable. And I also want to see C.J. Stroud – because this is something that you don't see as much in college. But if you have to audible, audible. If it's a pass play and it's not there, let's go ahead and let's run the ball. If it's a run play and the, the front seven is looking kind of weird and you're noticing that maybe this DB is creeping up to the line of scrimmage and you're not necessarily comfortable, audible out and maybe you get a quick pass, right? So – just be comfortable, man. And 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 for CJ, who is a guy that I really do like him as a player, as a personality, take what the defense is giving you. Plain and simple. Hmm. Um, I do want to mention this before moving on. Case Keenum, as I mentioned, we spoke to him um, following day 10 of training camp. And he said one of the things – that has impressed him so far about C.J. Stroud has been his confidence. And that is something that's real telling because on yesterday's show, when I talked about the improvements that C.J. has made ever since he's been taking majority, if not all of the first team reps, that is something that I have seen his growth in confidence. I'd say one thing is uh, I've been really impressed with his confidence. And I say that with like just practice, training camp practice in mind here the last couple of weeks, it hadn't been perfect for many of us. You know, we all want, plays back, decisions back, uh, reps back, but, you know, some of his best plays came after a mistake. And I think his his confidence, his unwavering 
um, mindset of just trying to get better, trying to put the team in the best possible situation, the ball where it needs to go, uh, with a lot of pressures. You know, I've I've never been drafted as high as he was. You know, I've never been drafted, so I, I don't know. You know, some of the pressures that go on there and other things that he's dealing with. So I've been very impressed uh, with his unwavering focus on getting better every day and uh, his confidence in that. So he's done a great job. Welcome back in, Locked On Texan listeners and viewers. Before we close out today's show, we got to look at more takeaways from day 10. And for a lot of you guys who's been concerned, like I wish we can let you guys in a little bit on our text thread. But Cody texted me something, and it was no way we were not going to talk about it today. Oh, Lord. Kenyon Green finished off that final drive, Cody, as how you put it, dominated. <laughs> And and if we go back to yesterday's show. Today's kind of like part two of Monday's show. Mm-hmm. I wanted to give you guys my insight on what I'm seeing from Mr. Green, the sophomore. But how Cody texted me today, because I wasn't out there, must have hurt the show because he put <laughs> it all together. Cody, what was your takeaways from day 10? Um, That was by far my best and biggest takeaway was just watching the growth and development of Kenyon Green Um, during that final drive, as I mentioned, where the Texans put, I think it was like 18 minutes on the game clock, and they literally just played football. Um, They didn't have pads on, but just watching the growth and development of Green was something to see. Um, My favorite part is they got down in the red zone, and he held his own against Assange Ridgeway. And Jonathan Grenard. And ladies and gentlemen, the first couple of days of training camp, Jonathan Grenard was giving Green the business. And for him to hold his own against those two players says a lot about his continuous growth and development. Well, given everything you know about Keon Green, what's, what's it been like seeing his growth on that last drive? It seemed like he held his own against um, Jonathan Grenard and Ridgeway. Yeah, how's Kenyon doing? Kenyon is. Uh... He's doing a really good job. Kenyon is, uh, he loves football, he loves to play football. You can see it. He's excited when he's out there playing. He's competitive and he's continued to get better. Uh, he's grinding through camp, pushing himself, right? And he's getting better. And it's, it's fun to watch, right? I think he's going to be a really good, uh, important piece to what we're doing up front. And it's fun to see him continue to grow in his second year. Um, the best part about green having arguably his best day of training camp practice this is what the houston texans are going to need um look and i i don't want to have to you know rush him or anything like that but you know knowing that scott quisenberry is going to be out for the rest of this season you know titus howard at best four to six weeks he's going to have to expedite his development but yesterday was a step in the right direction um my second biggest takeaway of day two of training camp John Mechie, Tank Dale. That's all I got to say. If you've been keeping up with the show over the last couple of days. You already know. Two, you already know. Those two wide receivers have, have, have done a phenomenal job. Rather, they are lining up on the outside or lining up in the slot, especially John Mechie. Those two guys, man. If they have an opportunity to create separation, to get into space, they are the playmakers that the Houston Texans need in order to get this offense moving in the in the right direction in 2023. Absolutely. And I also would like to add, though I wasn't out there, I want to take it back to segment two, talking about what C.J. Stroud and what I want to see from him. I also want to just see Bobby Slug be comfortable as an O.C. calling plays. Mm-hmm. I, don't want to, I don't want to see too much – too much of the vanilla. It's game one, by the way. Back then, it would normally be between game two and game three. You see more of the offense now with only three games in the preseason. That goes maybe more so to game two. But I definitely want to see him kind of step out of the shadow of Kyle Shanahan and and, and call his own plays. And guys, Houston – and, and by no means are none of these guys just at right now in their careers. Anything can happen. Game changers. But Jerry Wayne, Jesse Matthews, hmm. Steven Sims, who at times has lined up with, with the first team, uh, X validate I want to see some of these guys that are considered maybe practice squad c- candidates or on the bubble of making a roster or not. I want to see some of these skilled position guys get an opportunity to beat out the next man. I want to see some competition from that spot. 
Thank you guys for checking out today's episode of the Locked On Texas podcast. Be sure to do a couple of things. Subscribe, then like, and then comment to the Locked On Texas podcast on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, follow me on Twitter at John underscore Hickman 12 on Twitter slash X. Your mama named you X, I'm going to call you. I mean, your mama named you Twitter, I'm going to call you Twitter. And make sure that you continue to listen to the Locked On Texas podcast throughout this week, every week, next week, next month. All year. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody C-O-T-Y-D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.